The Steam Deck is a handheld... I don't have to do this right, but you know what the Steam Deck is. But one thing you might not know is how to make the battery life last longer. So today, I'm going to show you all the things you can do to stretch out your battery and maybe even debunk a popular battery saving trick. You're just ruining it! You're ru Look at my lips, you're ruining it! Let's get right into it. I'm going to put these tips into three categories. These categories will show you the level of difficulty or knowledge you'll need to utilize them to their full potential. Although, don't be scared or anything, nothing I will show you today has any real harm of breaking your system if you're careful. So, the three categories are no brainers, so easy you don't even need a brain, brainers need a brain, if you have one, you'll be fine, and super brainers, you should have some PC tinkering experience. So, without wasting any more time, let's jump into our first tips, the no-brainer. The first tip, manually set brightness to as low as you need. Adaptive brightness settings are fine, but it usually sets it to slightly brighter than most people actually need. This is why I would recommend manually setting the brightness. My rule is to set it to as dim as you possibly can while still being able to see. Second, use headphones. Powering the speakers in the Steam Deck takes battery, and the higher the volume, the more power that is needed. However, since headphones are directly on your ears, you'll be able to have the sound lower, which in turn means less drain. Even if you need the sound all the way up, the drivers in most headphones are going to take less power than the Steam Deck's built-in speakers. Number three would be turn off HDR. This is basically an extension to the manually set brightness tip. HDR usually makes the screen darker, meaning you will need to set the brightness setting higher, which, as we now know, decreases battery life. Okay, next, let's get into the brainer tips. The first is use FSR1. During my testing, I tested FSR1, 2, and 3 in Yakuza Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth. Great game, by the way. And tried to see which one gave better battery life. They all do a pretty good job at it, however FSR1 gave a slightly better battery life. This is because FSR2 and FSR3 both do temporal upscaling, which basically means it looks at the current frame and compares it to the last frame to try and fill in the gaps better. While FSR1 doesn't do this, it just looks at each frame as its own standalone thing. So what does this have to do with battery life? Well, in a very basic way, FSR1 is going to put less strain on the GPU, meaning less power draw. So, go with FSR1 where possible. If you can't, FSR2 is the next best pick. The second tip would be render at a lower frame rate. This is one of those tips that I don't like hearing, because people always say render at 720p. This isn't wrong, but just kind of weird that 720p is the recommendation, as it isn't even that much of a difference in battery life. Which makes sense if you think about it. The number of pixels that have to be rendered in 1280 by 800, the Steam Deck's default screen size, is 1,024,000, compared to the 921,600 pixels of a 1280 by 720, which is only 10% less pixels to render, which is not going to be a noticeable increase in battery life. I would recommend going 960 by 600 and setting FSR 1 to ultra quality. This keeps the aspect ratio the same, so there's no stretching of the image. Also, on a lot of games, it doesn't even look as bad as it sounds. However, if it looks wrong to you, I would try 1152 by 720 with ultra quality on FSR 1. Third tip, set a TDP limit. The TDP limit tells the processor the maximum power is allowed to draw. This will be different for every game, so you'll have to find it yourself or look online. For Yakuza Infinite Wealth, I found a TDP limit of 8 is the right balance between performance and battery saving. The fourth tip, cloud gaming. If you don't mind it and have the bandwidth available on the go, streaming games to the Steam Deck through the cloud is going to net you some really good battery life, as the system doesn't need to use as much resources trying to render the game natively. I was hesitant to put this in here, since nobody really buys a Steam Deck to stream games, however it is a really good way you can save battery, so it's in here. Okay, now we've gotten through the easier things to do, let's move on to the more involved battery saving tips. So let's dive into the super brainers. Tip one, undervolt your system. 
Undervolting limits the amount of power draw needed from the components to function optimally. By default, manufacturers make the limits higher than they need to be, mostly for reliability. However, thanks to a Steam Deck update, we can undervolt our stuff without even needing to install anything else. One thing I will say about undervolting is that most people do it incorrectly. You'll hear things on the internet like, I undervolted my system, minus 30 millivolts, which isn't exactly how this works. The goal with undervolting isn't to set all of the numbers to the same thing, is to find the sweet spot that each component can go to without affecting performance. For instance, on my Steam Deck OLED, my stable undervolts are minus 50 for the CPU, minus 30 for the GPU, and minus 40 for the SoC. You should look at each component as a standalone thing, even if they work together. Also remember to really put stress on your system. Load up Cyberpunk 2077 on ultra settings without any FSR and make everything blow up to test the GPU. Install something like STUI or stress on the Steam Deck desktop mode to test the CPU. Really put stress on the system to ensure that you won't have any issues later on. The second tip is disable any hardware that you don't use. In the BIOS, you can turn off some hardware. For instance, I don't use the touchscreen like at all. So in the BIOS, I have disabled the touch panel support. Also, if you're using the tip from category one about manual brightness, disable the adaptive lighting sensor in the BIOS by turning off ALS support. Things like this may not save a lot of battery in the moment, but adding up over time, you can save a lot. So disable anything you just don't need. Number three, disable quick boot. This won't help battery life while playing games, but it does help when you're not. When you shut down your Steam Deck, it keeps some things stored into RAM. This allows the deck to boot quicker. However, this also means the battery is just sending enough power to the RAM to keep the session stored into it. We can fix this by disabling quick boot. This makes it so when you power off your deck, nothing is saved, which makes for a slightly longer boot time. However, it also means the battery isn't sending power out to other components. You will still see some battery drain because batteries naturally discharge over time anyway. However, it will use a lot less than without the setting on. Tip number four is underclock your CPU and GPU. Underclocking means forcing the GPU and CPU to run at lower clock speeds, which in turn means they are requesting less power. A lot of people assume that lower clock speeds equals less performance, and this is true. However, the beauty with clock speeds is that we can adjust them to whatever we want. So yes, we could underclock by a lot and lose a ton of performance, or we could underclock by a little and only lose a little. To underclock, you will need to install Decky. I'll leave a great video below by Game Tech Planet, or click on screen now. Then install Power Tools from the Decky Plugins menu. In Power Tools, you'll have options to set the frequency limits of your GPU and CPU. Tinker with the max frequency limit, setting it lower and lower until you find that sweet spot. The performance shouldn't be worse, but the limit should be lower than the maximum. On some games, you may only want to set the CPU frequency limit, and on others, maybe just the GPU. Tinker with the settings until you find your perfect settings. Also, don't worry about breaking anything. The worst you can do is just make the FPS in the game go down. If you get to that limit, just pump the slider back up. For the fifth tip, set a GPU power play limit. This will, basically, limit the power that the GPU can request from the battery. To do this, go to Power Tools, then go down to GPU and click Power Play Limits. Then slide the sliders to the left until your game performance starts to lag. Once you hit that point, slowly go up one notch at a time until you find the balance between performance and the power limit. The sixth tip, try different CPU governors in power tools. The governor, as its name suggests, governs the amount of power that the CPU should be using. So for instance, setting this to performance means the CPU will be able to ask for as much power as it needs to get the job done, while power saving does the complete opposite. A lot of these settings are very similar, however the three that you usually be choosing from are are power save, performance, and conservative. Power save will use the bare minimum power, which may affect performance. Conservative will use as much as it thinks it needs, or trying to say as power efficient as possible. And performance will ask for as much power as it needs to perform at its maximum, even when it doesn't need to. And our last tip, set a system-wide power play limit. This will do exactly what it does with the GPU. However, it will do it, well, system-wide. It will limit the power asked for by the GPU, CPU, and SOC. To limit this, go to the BIOS, go to Advanced, 
then click on power controls, set this from auto to manual and tweak these to whatever you need. This is the thing you will need to keep testing. However, as a starting point, I say to put them both on 12,000. This means the system can ask for a total of 12 watts between the GPU, CPU and SOC. If you set a GPU limit in power tools to something lower than whatever you do here, the SOC and CPU will usually ask for more power, which can be really useful in CPU limited games. So, these are all the power options I found whilst trying to maximise my Steam Deck battery life. With these options combined, I can play Yakuza Infinite Wealth for 4 to 5 hours on a single charge. I can also play Cyberpunk for just over 2 hours on a single full charge. As we can see, this can't just magically make games last for 12 hours no matter what. However, it gives us much more time to play, while keeping our components cooler and making battery last longer. So, a win-win-win in my box. Anyway, thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed this, check out my other videos and subscribe if you enjoyed the content. I've been me, you've been you, and terrible battery life has just been ruined by maths, maths, maths.